All right guys, so firstly, the thing you'll notice is my mental little setup here. It's a bit messy. I've got my drone batteries on charge. I'm gonna be flying around today. Anyway, today's question is from somebody who would like to remain anonymous. And they say, Hi Stefan, I'm subscribed to your YouTube channel and I'd like to answer these questions. I'd like you to answer these questions in a video, but I would like to stay anonymous. Number one, how can I do a layer four and even a layer three lucid dreams without the risk of accidentally changing my thoughts and beliefs? Number two, are there any dangerous risks similar to this? This poses an interesting question and an interesting concept. And that concept is, can you change your beliefs and thoughts in a lucid dream? And if so, how easy is it to do it? Can you do it by accident or is it something that you have to really intend to happen? Now I'm gonna share my personal experiences with this, which are as follows. It, with lucid dreaming and through lucid dreams, I have managed to change a lot of my personal beliefs, thoughts and my belief system which makes up my sort of personality and, and what I believe about the world. But it's not something I've done just in a lucid dream, it's something I've done in waking life as well. So you can, you can use lucid dreaming, and I'll get onto the layers in a second because the layers do have an impact as to you know, what effects this will have on you. You can use lucid dreaming to affect and even bolster your beliefs or you know, thoughts about the world. But you, this is very deliberate. It's, you know, it's very rarely spontaneous and it very rarely happens you know, by accident as, as this person has described. You can rarely accidentally change your beliefs. Well, to be able to change a belief, right, it requires so much willpower and, and practice and persistence because beliefs are really strong. You know, if you, if you hold a certain belief about something, the longer you've held that belief, the harder it will be to change. And you can't just accidentally have a lucid dream and like wake up in the morning with that lucid dream, with that belief changed in most cases. Now you can do it, you certainly can do it, but it's not an accident. Some sort of persistent sort of action moving towards this. It's not something you can just do accidentally in one, dream, in, in one lucid dream. Now the different layers of a lucid dream, let me explain how they tie into this. We, I've spoken before about the layer one, two, three, and four. I don't think I've made a layer five video just yet, but it's coming. Uh, now layer four is essentially just a lucid dream, a dream in which you're aware that you're dreaming and you're in control of what you do, and to some degree you're in control of the dream world as well. You are not in control of your subconscious mind, <laughs> because you can't be, right, it's your subconscious. You're not, you're, you very rarely, you know, there are exceptions and it's sort of like a, it's, a, it's a, an emerging field of study, but you can't really control your subconscious mind. You can influence it and you can definitely work with it, but you can't, you can't directly control it because otherwise you'd be able to do things like voluntarily raise your body temperature or decide to digest your food slower or faster. You can influence those things. You know, like for example with digestion, if you decide to go and do something that will release adrenaline, like a skydive or like putting yourself in danger, that will temporarily slow down your digestion because you have that fight or flight response and your reptilian brain takes over and you slow down your digestion while you deal with the threat. You, you know, we know that stuff. We can influence our subconscious mind in that way, but we can't control it consciously with just our thoughts alone. And for that reason, going back to the original question, you can't very easily and you certainly can't accidentally change a fundamental belief that you hold. It's going to take a bit more work and it's going to take a bit more consistency. It can be done, but it can't be done overnight. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about having a lucid dream and then waking up like a completely changed person. Although, it, you know, a profound lucid dream is going to change you in some way. It might change your outlook on a certain person or a certain idea, but it rarely will completely change a belief system. You know, it can, but it is, it's rare, is what I'm saying. It's not going to happen all the time. So regarding the different layers, obviously the higher up the layers you go, the more lucid you become, right? Up until layer five, which, and even beyond layer five, which is like super lucidity, where you're, re you're hyper alert, you're hyper aware, and it requires a balancing of your hormones, which, you know, it, it, when we get onto this advanced stuff in later videos, it requires a balancing of your hormones, meaning it has to be done at a certain time of night. There's not really any way around that. It has to be done during your longest period of REM sleep when you're just starting to produce the right amount of serotonin that's gonna get ready to wake you up and increase your alertness for the day. But you've also got a significant amount of melatonin still in your system, enough to keep you asleep and sort of like sedated, I guess you could say, where you're gonna be held in the lucid dream and it's gonna be a deep, 
uh, immersive experience. That's for advanced stuff, right? I'm not going to get onto that just yet because I'm still trying to figure out like my audience on this channel and how how far you've progressed in lucid dreaming and you know what sort of level you're at. And by the way, it would really help me out if you could actually just comment, letting me know in a sentence or two how lucid you you feel, how advanced do you feel as a lucid dreamer? Do you think you're a beginner? Where you maybe have... And by the way, don't rate this on how many lucid dreams you have. I want you to describe your level of skill based on when you have lucid dreams, what level of lucidity are you attaining? Not how many you have, but what level of skill you're attaining in the lucid dream. So meaning like, how stable is the dream? Are you definitely lucid? Can you like work with the dream and interact with different things and set yourself challenges? Can you, for example, enter a lucid dream with the with the intention of doing something specific or do you just have a lucid dream and end up having sex with someone Th these things are, are going to be useful for me to know so i know what level of skill i need to produce videos for in the future because as you can imagine with almost 60,000 subscribers it's hard to produce a video that's going to be useful to every one of you that being said i'm sure there are most of you who just watch these videos anyway just because you you know like my hair flicking around or you like hearing my rants i don't know going back to the original question it's not as dangerous as maybe it sounded when I first posed the question. You can't accidentally change a belief system. You're, even if you want to do something positive like removing a phobia or improving your confidence, this stuff won't happen overnight. It's still going to take time. Anything you do in lucid dreaming will take at least a few tries, you know, or at least a few attempts to get any sort of results from it. But don't let that put you off. I mean, like, when I started it, it was difficult at first. But then the more advanced you get, the more you can use it for, and eventually it just becomes like a, just becomes part of your life, just like a tool. Just like you know that going to bed early and getting a good night's sleep is good for you. You know that eating vegetables and drinking enough water is good for you. And you just sort of use these things as tools. Like if you want to feel better, you drink more water, you eat healthier, you go to the gym, you work out, you see your friends, you do things that you know will make you feel better. In the same way that once you've built the lucid dreaming toolbox, I guess you could call it the toolbox, you know that if you want to work on some deep subconscious problem, you have a lucid dream. If you want to overcome fear or release anger or get inspiration, you have a lucid dream. It just becomes a tool that you can use, like meditation. If you're feeling stressed, you meditate. If you're feeling hungry, you go and have some food. If you want inspiration, you have a lucid dream. And in the same way, if you want to work with your belief systems or you know overcome phobias or do sort of emotional, uh, emotional work on yourself, you use lucid dreaming. So that's it for now guys. Please go ahead and leave a comment. You do know how much I love my comments on my videos. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. This video and this channel are supported by my Patreon followers who are updated in the description of every video at the time of uploading. Please consider giving just a dollar a month to support this channel or just click the links in the description. You'll find links to various Lucid Dreaming products, articles, techniques and tutorials. If you did enjoy this video, please click the notification bell and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Why are you still watching this? You should have clicked one of my related videos by now, right? Or subscribed or gone onto my website or something like that.